a woman, 103 years old. I don't care who you are. That's amazing. That's great. The Lord's blessed her with such a long and full life. Uh, if you look around, family, I know uh, in other times this room probably would have been crowded. But if you look around at each other, she's left behind quite a legacy. And friends, you remember, and many of these people have come up to me and said, I wish you would have known her when, and they would give me some story, which was just a hoot to listen to. And I believe every word of it because she left a testimony. And she did a lot of good in this community. And the results of that, the ongoing consequences of that, just, it's like ripples that just keep on going. And for future generations, we have much thanks for her. If you read her obituary, it's quite an impressive resume for a life well lived. But I believe that doesn't even scratch the surface, the, the details there. And so you have much to be thankful for, family. I'm going to glean from Psalm 116 this morning. And just kind of help us think through Miss Bobby's life and the testimony. The very first words in that psalm is I love the Lord. If you know anything about this body, you would know that she loved the Lord. She loves the Lord. Um, if I understand correctly, she joined this church in 1940. This is 2020. That makes that 80 years. 80 years of member. Now, everybody can't do that. It's up to the Lord and then when he calls us home. But that's still remarkable. To, to be a member of the church for 80 years. I love the Lord. Why? David tells us why here. He loves the Lord. Because he has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me. Therefore, I will call on him as long as I live. Then he jumped down a little bit later and says, I called on the name of the Lord. O oh Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. There came a time in this Bobby's life where she recognized her need for a Savior. And she called on the name of the Lord. And the Lord heard her prayer. And she had much to be thankful for. And David says, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. And Miss Bobby could testify to that as well. She saw so much hurt in the kind of work she did. She saw so much pain. But all through it, she saw the Lord's hand at work through the goodness of his people that he called to work for him in this community. David says, Return, O my soul, to your rest, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. That's something we can say to Miss Bobby today. Return, soul, to your rest. The Lord's been so good. You've delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. That's what she's doing now. There's no more tears for her. No more fear of falling. She walks before the Lord. And then, finally, verse 15 says, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Her life didn't go unnoticed by the Lord, and neither did her death. He says, Precious. Because she belonged to him. And she served him well. And so it's appropriate for us in verse 17 where he says, I will offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. So let's do that now. Our Father, we want to just do what that psalm says there. Call on your name and offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Lord, to praise your name because of who you made Bobby to be. Lord, her life, her testimony, her witness, the work that she did. Our Father, it speaks volumes for the people in this room and for this community and beyond. Lord, we don't know how many lives she touched and how many lives you touched through her. But Lord, you do. And we just commend those to you in your hand. Father, we pray that you would carry up, uh, take up that torch and, and, and carry it on to the one that she left behind. That we would live that legacy well. Father, I pray your strength, your comfort on this family, this group of friends here today. 
Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. passage of the scripture significant about it. You know them. They're familiar. No doubt you can join me in saying that. The danger in familiar scripture is that we say I know them. Uh, I invite you to hear speak. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then from John's Gospel, these verses. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way, you know. If that larger group who is here in spirit were able to be here today, if I said, uh, how many of you ever played bridge with uh, Bobby? I would see hands, and I see, I see hands now. Uh, I suppose this, this room would have a difficult time holding the people who played bridge with Bobby. Many of those have gone. Probably most of those have gone, and yet there are many still remaining. Because Bobby had that ability to uh, move across any timelines that uh, were there. Uh, it didn't matter how young you were or how old you were. I told Helen that I was so grateful that uh, just a few years ago, it wasn't that many years ago, when she had her mother in town on a Sunday. Uh, Karen and I were at church at the Methodist Church on that Sunday morning, and I do believe we were having a meal at the church after that. Uh, but I had word that uh, Helen wanted to bring her mother by so that Bobby and Jane could see each other. Uh, 
And I was, I'm remaining so thankful for that because I've told you that. Uh, but for them to be able to connect, really for them, uh, before now, that last time here, uh, was just a great time. Uh, I think about what Jesus must have meant when he said that he is the way. Uh, and I think too often we want to take that as uh, someone to punch our ticket so that we can get on the bus when the time comes. But I would want to say to us today that uh, Bobby chose to live in her way with the gifts that were unique to Bobby. Uh, you know that she had a, a sense of humor. Uh, probably the word that you used was uh, a poo. That's probably really appropriate. I, I remember a story that Helen told me, and that didn't just happen when Bobby grew up, you know that. But, uh, a story that Helen told me about when she was uh, in high school, and uh, Bibble Waters was in her class, and before school on one particular morning, uh, Bibble had not read what she was supposed to read for literature. And so Bobby, helping Bibble out, told the story. Except the story that Bobby told her was not the story that was supposed to have been read for home. <laughs> now, who do you think that the teacher called on to give uh, an account of what she had read? That's right, that was Bill. Uh, well, that's a great story. Uh, Bobby loved to have a good time. She loved to have fun, and she loved to have fun with the people that she loved. And it seems to me her love was uh, not just family, though it was uh, important for family. Uh, and it was not just church, though it was important for church. It was just a, a love that flowed out of her and into this community, literally into the world. I didn't know, Ann, that uh, where I always knew that you grew up and that your mother, I didn't know that, uh, that that's where uh, the Franklins came back to when they came to Vianna in the early 30s. Uh, Bobby graduated from Vianna High School in 34. Went to Millersville, to GSCW. Came back here in 37. Uh, Richard Odom also came here in 37 to teach. And Helen says in uh, some of her mother's things, there's a, uh, she, she filled in the blank in a book that says the first, first place you saw your husband. Well, that, she said the living room of her house. Uh, Y'all all know that story. In 1940, they were wed. And I can't think of uh, Bobby without thinking of Richard, and I can't think of Richard without thinking of Bobby. Uh, because they both, in their own arenas, gave themselves to this community, more importantly to the people of this community so that we could be a community. Uh, I thought again, I've had a lot of things to think about, Helen, uh, since I've started thinking about your mother. Uh, I thought about the, the neighborhood over there where, uh, where y'all lived and, uh, you know, and I see neighborhood folks here today. Uh, I think about the impact that uh, your mother had on uh, all those children in the in the neighborhood. Uh, I think about, uh, I mean, you and Alice had this extraordinary uh, ability to invite people to your house because you have a swimming pool. Uh, and your mother was very gracious about that, you said, about uh, people coming in using the telephone and dripping water all over the house. And, uh, but Bobby and attitude was, we can clean it up. We can clean it up. You also told me that, uh, and this is what I said earlier about your mother having this ability to move, uh, regardless of age, from group to group to group, uh, how yours and Alice's friends uh, grew up to become not only your friends, but Bobby's friends too, and how they treasured the conversations uh, with your mother. In fact, you said, I think you said Rosemary told you how much she liked coming to your house just because she could talk to your mother. Uh, that's a great gift. The gift of presence, the gift of presence to uh, 
So children and the young women and the older adults. In 1937, when Bobby came back here from Milledgeville, she went to work for the Department of uh, Public Welfare, which we know as DFCS. She did that for 42 years. Now, when I, whenever I think about uh, the DFCS here, I have to think about uh, growing up here and, and going to uh, Ford's drugstore and walking to the counter and just saying, I want welfare. So the welfare was simply a, a fountain drink with a shot of cherry. Uh, but they were called welfare because uh, every day the women at DFCS, at the welfare department, would call an order in and Junior Jordan would carry that order uh, a block and a half uh, to those women and they would have their fountain drinks, fountain coats with cheer. So those became welfare specials and that's why we all grew up drinking welfare in my house. I don't think I've ever worked over welfare anywhere else in the world. <laughs> The bad thing about that was uh, Coach Russell was around and one of his training rules was uh, we couldn't drink carbonated drinks. That made for some long football and basketball seasons around my high school. Uh, but we made up for it when the season was over because the last thing we would do would be to violate Coach Cassell's training rules. I think of Bobby and Richard, and I think of the way, I think of this, uh, now that, that generation we know to be what uh, Tom Bronco called the greatest generation. And I think rightly so. Uh, <clears throat> they were, they, they born in, during, or at the end of uh, World War I. They were tempered by the Great Depression. They sacrificed during World War II. Richard served in the Coast Guard. And then they did all they could do to make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. We're the beneficiaries of that. Uh, make no, they have no doubt about that. We are the beneficiaries. Uh, and, and we live that in a large way, those of us who grew up in this community. Uh, I think that the, one of the reasons they were the greatest generation is because they still, they had this sense of sacred vocation. Uh, where a job is more than a job, work is more than work, but it is only a sacred calling. And I don't know of any better examples of that than Bobby and Richard. Uh, I, Richard came to teach, he taught, he taught ag, he worked with the young farmers, uh, he gave his life to the community, to the school. Uh, I never took an ag class. Uh, I have friends who took an ag class, in fact, friends who, the boys were one year, maybe when they were in eighth grade, it, was, it wasn't an option, it was uh, enforced. They, they had to take A. My friend tells me that uh, not too long into the school year, Mr. Stone sent out a, an invitation to some of them to come to his office so they could uh, talk about their attitudes. Uh, and what Mr. Stone said to them was, now, I know that you boys don't really want to be in ag, but you really don't have a choice. What you have a choice about is your attitude. He said, and if you will just be patient with Mr. Oden, if you'll listen to him, if you'll pay attention to him, you know you live in an agricultural community. And I believe that by the time you finish this class and you grow up to be young men, that you'll know when somebody says steak, that comes from a cow, and when somebody says pork, that comes from a hog. <laughs> I hope your attitude's better. I'm sure it was. I'm sure it was. How many lives do you think Richard Odom touched in this community? How many lives do you think Bobby touched? Now, surely by her her vocation, her calling, she worked 42 years for DFACS. How many families, how many children do you think she made a difference in their life? What do you think the witnesses, where do you think the witnesses would all be today if they had to stand and, and they would have gladly shared what, what Miss Bobby meant to them? But how many lives did she impact in terms of uh, particularly the, 
the young girls who went through her house, or the people she played bridge with, or the people that she drank coffee with at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So it seems to me that, uh, that what she had the gift to do was to extend and build relationships, which is the foundation of community. She did that through this church. She did that through her work. She did that through her home, her family. In fact, that's just about everything she did. Helen tells me that uh, in the, the last days, and the days that she was in, now you know that she, uh, I mean, Two weeks ago, she was fine, and uh, so her her uh, her leaving here was uh, rather quickly and abrupt. Uh, but her she had caregivers for the last years, and uh, what I know about that is that is uh, she loved those caregivers; they loved her. Uh, she had that ability to be present. For relationships and it's that presence for relationship that concern for the other person that ultimately builds community now there are many of us who love to go back and revisit those days uh, and those were really good days not all of that was good but we tend to remember the really good part but it's incumbent upon us in the here and now to see how it is that we're called to do that same sort of work. Bobby was called to live her life in Christ with the gifts with which she was blessed. And that same calling rests upon us. We're called to live our lives in Christ with those same gifts with which we're blessed. How is it different from Bobby? But the words of Jesus to his disciples and to us remain the same. I am the way. And in this time of uh, Advent, as we move toward Christmas, as we look again for the coming of Christ and we claim the celebration of Christ who came 2,000 years ago, it would, it would serve us well to remember that the word becomes flesh. And if the word doesn't become flesh in us, dear friends, where will the word become flesh? That's simply, as I see it, what body allowed her life to be. A manifestation of the love of God Revealed in Christ, revealed through her. Her life was long and full, as Brian said. I trust that uh, this captures something of the essence of it, but I remind you, friends and family, I remind you uh, that there are almost endless stories about Bobby Owen. And those are the stories that will continue to shape grandchildren, the next generation, the next generation, so long as those stories are told. You search far and wide, you won't find better stories to tell that capture the essence of what it means to love God and to love one another, even as you love yourself.
close our time here with this familiar prayer. Will you bow as I pray for it? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever.